So there's tons of ways to do glitch effects and we've done a handful of these type of tutorials on the channel. But in this video, I want this to be quick and I want to break down three unique uh, glitch effects that we have not done yet that you can implement into your work uh, pretty quick. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Slimduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day today. So <clears throat> there's plenty of ways to do this sort of thing. I want to break this down really quick. So without wasting more time, let's learn something cool. Jump in. Let's get started. So to get started in our first technique, I want to talk about how we can quickly glitch titles or logos. And of course, there are many ways to create glitch effects. That's why, you know, if you're looking for something very specific or you don't really have the time, I highly suggest taking a look at several amazing glitch templates from my favorite creators that will help you save a tremendous amount of time. And you'll be able to find the exact glitch effect that you're looking for, whether you're putting together a logo animation, an entire, you know, composition that you need to create a glitch effect, or you need to be able to have a pack long term that allows you to do amazing glitch transitions. I will link together some of my favorite glitch templates in the links below and if you do pick up anything you will be supporting our channel so thank you very much. So I have a title animation here from our 100 titles kit right here in this extension but we want to be able to glitch this this works for logo or anything just make sure that layer is pre-composed in its own composition. To get started we'll go up to layer new adjustment layer and we'll go to effect distort and we're going to grab something called wave warp and we'll set the wave type to noise. And we can set up the wave height a little bit to maybe like 70 or so, maybe 80. And then come here to wave width and really increase this. And we'll come here and type in like 5,500. And you get these blocks here. Then you can come here to direction. And this is where you can change the direction of the glitch. So it can go in any direction that you want. And we can set our wave speed to uh, point one so we have this animation here and you know it's a little bit crazy but that's okay that's what we want so what we're going to do here is we're going to take our adjustment layer and you know we'll come here to the out point we'll trim it in just keep this up for like a few frames so we have it up here for a few frames <clears throat> and what we'll do is we'll take this layer go to edit duplicate and we'll offset it in time by a little bit we'll duplicate it again and we can just create some random duplications here so it'll do a random glitch just like that and that's nice so then what we'll do is we'll take all of our layers here and we'll go up to layer pre-compose and we'll just call this uh, glitch ready. So what we're gonna do here is take this composition and duplicate it and go up to effect channel and we'll grab shift channels and we'll turn off the green layer and we'll turn off the blue and we'll duplicate this and we'll turn off red and turn the green back on and then we'll duplicate this again and we'll turn the green off and turn the blue back on to blue. Okay, then what we'll do here is we'll take our two top layers, set the blend mode to screen. Okay, and all we're going to do is hit Peer and Keyboard for position, and we can like offset the layers. We don't do any keyframes here for this one, uh, and we can just offset each one just by touch. So then we'll have like this slight RGB glitch here, and that's fine. But what we want to do is kind of just match this up with the glitches. So right here, what I'll do is I'll take our three top layers, and I'll go up to Edit Split Layer, and I'll just delete it. So it'll just be doing that RGB look right there and then it goes back to normal and we'll want it to, and we'll want it to come back on. So what we'll do is we'll take our three top layers again, we'll duplicate them, bring them to the top and we'll just drag this out and bring in the endpoint. So it'll be glitching there and then we'll close out the out point there on the when it ends. All right, so now you'll have a quick glitch transition like this. And of course you can variate the direction or change how you want to have that RGB split go like that. So that's how you can create a quick glitch for your title or logo. So in our second technique, I want to talk about how we can glitch an entire composition with fractal noise. All right, so we have some you know background here, some footage, and let's say we want to be able to add a quick glitch to that as well. So pretty easy to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to layer new solid. And we can just call this fractal. And we'll click OK. Then we'll go up to Effect, Noise and Grain, and we'll grab the Fractal Noise. Yeah, that's why we called it Fractal. So what we'll do here is we can increase the contrast up to like 300. We can also bring down the brightness by a touch, just kind of create some contrast here. You know, and then we come here to the Transform window, and this is really where we're going to create a unique uh, look. Well, what we'll do here is we'll check on Uniform Scaling, okay? And where it says scale width, we'll want to really increase this. So we'll come here and maybe set this up to like 10,000. And you know, you get a pretty unique look there. Of course, we can bring down the height as well, which will give you these more, uh, you know, straight fluid lines here. And that's nice. 
and you know for the most part you know it's gonna look fine but we need to be able to animate this the quickest way to animate this is to go into the evolution options and where it says random seed what we can do is all click the stopwatch and we'll get to type in an expression fun right so we'll type in time asterisk uh, you know do like a low number like 10 it could be a little bit less than that and you know you get this moving here and that's cool uh, so consider this like all the glitches that will be happening once we set this up correctly you can lower the number if you want it to be a little bit slower so we'll do like time asterisk five and you know that's totally cool so what we'll do here is we'll take this layer and go to layer pre-compose and we'll move all attributes in new comp we can call this uh fractal map great and let's undo our work by turning it off hide it okay we just wasted our time just kidding what we'll do is go to layer new adjustment layer Okay, we'll go to Effect, uh, Distort, and we'll grab Displacement Map, okay? And we'll set the Displacement Map layer to a fractal map to that layer that we just pre-composed, so we didn't waste our time. Let's talk about a few things here. Obviously, the borders here is pretty bad, and of course, I want to be able to talk about uh, creating your own little custom shapes here. So, we'll go up to Effect, Stylize, and we'll grab Motion Tile, and we'll put this effect above the Displacement Map. And we can increase the output width and the height and check on mirror edges so that deals with any of the black edges that you will have so boom back to normal so let's go back into our fractal map layer that we created and you can change you know the fractal type to like max i love doing that then you might have to decrease your uh, brightness by a little bit you can go back into the transform settings and you know you can increase the height this will make a big difference and you go back into our comp so now like you know you still got the background glitching there and that is you know pretty nice you can always you know, increase the speed of that but i really like where we're at with this a very subtle glitch effect and if you want to make this more intense we can come here to our displacement map layer we can increase the vertical displacement you get a, a little bit more there you can increase the horizontal you know and if you want we can come here you know we can add a keyframe for max horizontal and max vertical displacement we can move forward in time and set these down to zero and this would you know animate it off so that you can get rid of the glitches so you know it can be glitching like this and then it turns off so it's a quick little way to uh glitch out your comp and our third and final technique i want to talk about being able to do a glitch transition so you can tie multiple you know videos compositions together so what we're going to do is we're going to create another adjustment layer so we'll go to layer new adjustment layer and i'm going to take this adjustment layer and we'll go to effect uh we'll grab the store and we'll grab an optics compensation here and this is where we have to be creative with this so we need to be able to distort the image here so right before our first shot ends we'll add a keyframe for field of view and we can also add a keyframe for view center and what i'll do is i'll take our cross here for view center and i'll just put it like in the corner of our comp like this okay and you know we'll go past the you know second clip a little bit and we'll hit U on keyboard to bring up those keyframes. We'll add a keyframe for both of those. And I'll take our view center crosshair and I will put it in the other corner of our comp. Then we'll move to the cut between the two shots and we'll increase our field of view all the way up to like 100 plus and we can check on reverse lens distortion. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna distort the entire image really quick and you know, that's pretty cool. So what else we can do is take our first keyframes and make them easy ease by hitting F9 on our keyboard and take the last keyframe and do the same exact thing. So, so now we have a nice and smooth animation here that seems very seamless and we can always increase the field of view if you want to go a little bit more crazy. So this kind of distorts the image a little bit, but we need to be able to tie this together uh, with a little bit more of a glitch resemblance. So we can do the RGB uh, split and do something a little bit different this time. So as before, what we'll do is we'll take our all of our work that we've done and we'll go to layer pre-compose and we can just call this you know transition you know ready so what we'll do is we'll take our comp and we'll duplicate it and then we'll go back up to effect uh, channel and we'll grab the shift channels and we'll do the same thing we'll turn off the green turn off the blue and you know, duplicate our comp turn off red turn on green uh, duplicate it go to turn off green turn on blue all right, and then we'll take the top three comps and we'll both set we'll set them all to screen. Okay, so right at this cut, right here, right, we need to bring in our endpoints, and we will cut this out by bringing in the outpoints at the end of that transition. So right here is where we're gonna set up our glitch. So we'll just hit here and keyboard for position. We'll all click the stopwatch and we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis four comma forty, and we can copy this, and it'll create a nice little glitch there. We can. 
you know, go to another one, uh, hold down alt on your keyboard on that stopwatch, pace in the wiggle, and you get another one here. Now you'll get this, you know, this undercut here. So what I just do and go back into your main composition and go to where you have that motion tile effect that we created, copy it and go back into the other comp, paste it in there, put it above the shift channels and you'll get rid of anything extra at the bottom or around the edges. So now you'll get a unique glitch transition between each of your shots that distorts it and obviously makes it as uh, glitchy as possible and you can combine all these techniques together. So that showcases our tutorial on these three quick glitch effects. Like I said, hopefully this has been fast uh, and something easy to learn off of and something for you to implement in your future work. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.